Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another in the series of videos from the Dermoscopy Made Simple uh, website. Today we're going to talk about uh, SCC in situ and pigmented Bowen's disease. In Australia we get a lot of SCC in situ. Obviously it's in sun exposed areas, particularly the face and scalp and on the lower legs. The definitive uh, feature for us dermatoscopically are what are called coiled vessels, um, coiled red or dot vessels. Unfortunately in the lower leg uh, other inflammatory conditions can give these dot vessels as well. So it can be difficult if you've got a condition such as psoriasis to distinguish the two. In other areas it's not quite so difficult. These coiled or uh, dot vessels are arranged in a packed fashion. Now the other variant of Bowen's disease, the other SEC insights we have is Bowen's disease, pigmented Bowen's disease. It can also have these daughter coiled vessels, but the major feature in these uh, lesions are the pigment dots arranged in lines, especially peripherally, and we'll come to that. They'll also show grey circles and scattered grey dots. Um, clods are less commonly seen in uh, pigmented Bowen's disease and lines reticular exceedingly rarely and surface scale can be seen in both these variants. So let's have a look at our images. Here's a pinkish lesion on this gentleman's scalp. You might be thinking SCC in situ, you might be thinking superficial BCC. And the way to separate them is to have a look with your dermatoscope. And there you'll see these dot or coiled vessels at this magnification they look a little bit dot-like. Here were two little areas of hemorrhage that corresponded to abrasions to the surface of this uh, lesion here. But you can see the pink lesion is made up of these dot vessels. Now rarely, you remember, dot vessels themselves can be a feature of uh, melanocytic lesions. But uh, in this sort of context, when you have a closer look at them and you see that they're coiled, that's the feature that tells you that it's uh, a Bowen's disease. So this is the typical dermatoscopic picture of SCC inside you on the scalp. This one perhaps shows these coiled vessels better. Um, we'd need to, I wonder if we can enlarge that just a little touch. There we go. I think that perhaps shows them as not being dots, but in fact being coiled. The other name for them used to be glomerular vessels, but they're the typical coiled vessels of an SCC inside you. Now, this is a lesion, it's a little bit of both. This is the lesion here, I think it was on the thigh from memory. You can see a pinkish area here, a pigmented area here, a little extension up here as well. Then when you look at it with the dermatoscope, here are your coiled or some dot vessels in this portion. And here you have these either brown dots or brown clods if you think they're a bit big for dots. Um, and this is the combination of a pigmented area of uh, SEC inside you and the normal pink non-pigmented area. So presenting as pink and brown dots or brown clods. And when you looked at this histologically, in an SEC inside you, you have full thickness atypia of the keratinocytes. In a solar keratosis, often your atypia is just confined down to this layer here, but in SEC inside you, it's the full thickness of uh, atypia. Um, and there was varying degrees of pigmentation here, you know, sort of skip areas along there. So that there's an increase of melanin in the basal melanocytes there as well, but the melanocytes are otherwise normal. There's more melanin scattered through this too. So that's the histology, full thickness atypia of uh, a pigmented SCC in situ. And it's in situ because everything's above the basement membrane. There's no invasion down into the dermis here. How else can SEC inside you present? These are poor keratoses. 
there are curious inherited autosomal dominant disorder with a thing called a coronoid lamella. It's a little uh, rampart style thickening of keratin that you'll see around the outside of these. But sometimes they can develop SCC uh, in the middle of them. And sometimes the SCC there, SCC in situ, will present as uh, red circles like this. Sometimes SCC in situ in the face will present as white circles. I haven't got a good example of this, uh, but it was something Cliff Rosendahl pointed out to me, and I really get, need to get one. But uh, really, red circles as a feature of SCC in situ can also be seen as uh, white circles in solar keratosis too. This is perhaps your more typical, um, well, it's another presentation of SCC, of pigmented SCC inside your pigmented bones, and this was this diffuse pigmented lesion on the cheek here. When you had a look at it with the dermatoscope, there wasn't an awful lot to tell you what was going on here. This was slightly rough on the surface as well. Uh, it looked more under the dermatoscope, but there were some subtle gray circles in this area. Um, I thought initially this was going to be just a pigmented solar keratosis, but it was reported as SCC in situ and that there was full thickness atypia. And we elected to treat him with some imiquimod, and this was part of the sort of reaction he developed in this area uh, during his therapy. Here's another one uh, that shows a more typical feature of SCC in situ on the scalp. This is the diffuse lesion here, a little bit out of focus, biggish though. But when you stick the dermatoscope on it, then you start to see these grey dots. And the dots are in lines. And that's commonly seen, I think Alan Cameron and uh, Cliff Rosendahl in their paper, from memory, it was about 30% to 40% of cases had dots in lines. Um, so if you see that, it's a highly characteristic feature of... Uh, a pigmented SCC, pigmented IEC, intrepidermal carcinoma. Here's another example of it. This was the clinical lesion on the arm here. This was the dermatoscopic view. It's like lines radial peripheral, but when you actually look at these, but there's no, um, you know, lines retic or anything like that in here. But when you actually look at these close up, that in fact the lines are made up as a series of dots here, running out in this fashion. And this is a very highly characteristic um, picture as well for the sorts of pigmented SCCs that we see here in uh, SCCs in situ we see here in Australia. And a lot of them can look very like uh, melanomas. So it's good to be able to pick these up. And there's all the keratin, uh, in fact, on the surface. Now, this was the article. If you click here, it'll take you to the website to see this article that uh, Cliff and Alan did. Let me just bring it up here. This was the paper published in JAD in April 2010. Um, and I think they published with Harold Kittler. These, you'll find there are some lovely images um, of and various examples with figures of the uh, features that were seen in their series, I think of 50 to 60 cases of pigmented um, SCC in situ. So uh, good histology and everything else as well. So if you want to see an excellent paper on this topic, that's where you should go to uh, get it. These are the various patterns that you, um, you were showing there. So this is the definitive paper to go to if you want information on uh, pigmented SCC in situ. And we might just end up with this particular lesion here. A very large lesion again on the forearm. Nice pink area here, pigmented area here. The pink area has all of these daughter glomerular vessels when you have a good close look at it. And this was an enlargement of the pigmented area here. Again, a series of brown dots. Difficult to say that they're in lines there. I don't think they are, not in the same way as it was in that second last image that I, I showed you. But again, this is a classic picture of pigmented SCC inside you. So, there we go. Certainly go to that article and read it. You can get it from the website. 
um, it's well worth looking at and uh, it'll give you all the accumulated expertise and experience of uh, some very um, distinguished practitioners who are very experienced in seeing this lesion here in Australia. Thank you very much.